Hello, fam, and thank you for coming back to Deb Chanel's 48th World. It's a family affair. Yes, we're both co hosts. I am me, you are you, and we are our yin and yang. Okay, I know I've been gone for a couple of days. Like I told you, I had a roof installed on Saturday, and all that bamming and bamming and woo child. That just gave me a headache pretty much the whole day, and I was just tired. I ain't doing that. Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so I didn't go at all, go out at all on Saturday. <coughs> Sunday, child, I was looking for some pork chops and chicken. Cause Friday I went out, me and the fam, trying to look for something, and it was bare. Do you hear me? It was bare. Ah, <sighs> I mean bare as a baby's bottle. Okay, when they come right fresh out the womb. I don't know what we're going to do, Lord. I don't know what we're going to do, family, with this coronavirus going around here and people acting like they ain't got no sense. Honey, we was in Walmart, and this lady had a cart full of toilet paper, an older lady and a semi-older lady. And they thought that Walmart was going to let them out. I guess they went to self-checkout or whatnot. But when they got to those doors, when it was time to leave, honey, they escorted them back around to customer service. And it seemed like she was telling the lady, you can't go with all that uh, toilet paper. You can't put other um, patrons or customers without. I'm telling you, it was full to the top. Y'all know how shopping cart buggies are. It was full. All right. And I'm like, I have come to the conclusion. These people are not stockpiling. They're stockpiling to sell tissue by the roll. Okay. That's what I'm getting. Because it's, it's too much. It's just too, too much. All right. Then I called myself. Going about three different stores. Trying to find me some meat. Now I did get some hamburger meat. I got some Italian sausage. Something my daughter likes. And um, some deli meat. But not the real. You know when you go to the grocery store. And you go into the meat section. Just a plethora. Or just a large amount of food to partake of. Or meats. You know what I'm saying. It wasn't there y'all. It wasn't there. I mean if you know anything about Kroger. That's one of our main uh, grocery store chains up here in Atlanta. Or, um, what is it called? We went to Walmart. We got several Walmarts up here. But I went to the one that was in my area. Jack. Didn't have Jack. Okay, then you have my oatmeal. Oh, and I love myself some strawberry and blueberry type of oatmeal. Okay. And then I went to this, uh, I want to say it's like a low... Um, it was in the hood. Let's just put it like this. It was in the hood, and they had pretty much everything. But they meat selection, they had like ten packs of pork chop for two dollars and fifty cents. Now you know I wasn't finna buy that. It was good. I'm like, oh, I'm finna have fun. I'm finna eat good. And I something to say. I, I remember good times when um. Florida had bought some meat for the family to eat, and it was good. But when they woke up that next morning, child, please, all of them had stomach aches. <laughs> <laughs> like they couldn't move all right if you did have to go to work you weren't going to work that day so those were my trials and tribulations other than the fact that it was really annoying it annoyed the hell out of me it's when i didn't see more people out in the community with gloves on when touching those um shopping carts as well as masks and then the government saying we should shut down we should shut down people should stay in the house other than you know going to get them something to eat from the grocery store or whatever and then coming back home because they had the social dis distancing or whatever they were trying to put out there but i'm like okay if you don't talk to the the people that own these corporations that people work for they try to provide a, a living for their um families and try to have the basic needs for them like food shelter and clothing if you don't tell them to shut down their businesses how are we going to not go back to work okay when they're saying oh but well, we're open what you gonna do you know what i'm saying the law enforcers need to and i'm talking about from the white house all the way down to the lowest of the totem pole they need to say no we need a to two-week quarantine for everybody to stay in the house period you know Period. I'm going to do something on Cynthia while she up there. I think it's California Horn. Mike was walking around talking about getting some fresh air. No, get some fresh air in your backyard. Okay. Do not go out there. You're not doing what the officials say. Okay. Do. You're not going to die or, or self-destruct if you don't go around people 
out in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's called, it must be in the atmosphere. It must be airborne, okay? Because I understand. But then I can understand because people are not doing what the health officials are saying. Stay the hell inside, okay? It's quite cool stay the hell inside stay with your family members okay play board games go outside in the backyard if you must get your fresh air get in your lawn sit in your lawn chairs breathe okay say hey to your neighbor way to your neighbor but let's give this let's give ourselves a fighting chance is what i'm trying to say to not contract this virus but that was my rant Okay, hopefully y'all dealt with it. Now, let's get on into the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But I got more because I plan on going on in Cynthia's behind. And, and Mike, talking about that, you know, let's go around here and just get some exercise. This, that, and third. Stay your ass at home is what you need to do, Cynthia, okay? And find them rooms and them keys that Mike said he had that y'all don't know about that he can go and partake of. And he don't have to be a bother with y'all. Oh, but anyway, we're going to be talking about The Real Housewives of Atlanta, Season 12, Episode 19, Ruined Peaches, okay? It pretty much gave me what I really had already to expect. It was drama filled, a lot of name calling on both sides. Uh, Kenya and um, Nene both were very... Uh, brassy brass brassy towards each other very abrasive but that's why we want them there right to give us those effects okay both of them are just too fit to be tied with each other and they both are the same okay before the scene end can you walked away and then at the end of the scene of the uh, episode for tonight, Nene walked away. So you pretty couldn't, you pretty much couldn't talk about either one because they were doing the same damn thing. Okay, younger version versus the older version. You can't really say Kenya's that much younger than Nene. Maybe about three years. Okay, because I think Kenya's what 48, 49, and I think Nene's 51, 52, 53, something like that. So they're really not that far in age difference. So we really can call Kenya OG as well. All right. I, that's what I can say. She an OG too. Because, you know, I, if you just, we we're talking about 10 years, that's okay. We can make her a young G. But we ain't talking that much difference. But, I, you know, they just ass backwards, both of them tonight. But it gave me drama. They did what they had to do. And it was cool. It was okay. I had no problems with them and how they were acting toward each other. Okay, it was a fair fight, fair game. They both gave me drama. Thank you. Okay, but we go on into where, damn, that damn Elijah. Hold on. Okay, we go into where we had Candy and Cynthia. They had a blow up, of course, uh, the same night where we had ended after the last episode. They had picked up where they had left off. Not really much to talk about there because they both were getting into each other's asses. And I hate when people saying they were blaming shit on the alcohol. A a a a alcohol, blame it on the a a a a as Jeremy Fox said, alcohol. Don't blame that shit on alcohol. Alcohol just induces whatever you feel like you want to do but you want a, a a way out you know what i'm saying you already know you want to act a fool you know you always want to you want to get somebody straight you want to get in somebody's ass but you wait until you don't have several drinks and then you're gonna blame it on the alcohol you know what i'm saying like no nah, that's what you felt from the beginning when you were sober instead of you standing in your own shit and getting them together while you sober and then you can get drunk and have fun the rest of the night that's usually how i do okay <laughs> I want I want you to know I was sober. I was in my right mind when I told you to go where I needed you to go and to stay there. Don't come back. You know what I'm saying? And then I get to drinking and have me a good old time. And if you get, you know, red upon or I get into your ass again, that's just make it uh, icing on the cake. Because you already know how I feel about you. I wasn't drunk. I was in my right stable mind. Okay. So the other part's just easy to, you know, throw more stuff at you <laughs> you know what i'm saying so you really not you shouldn't even be offended at this point but basically they go back and forth banter everywhere uh but the right way how we would say in the old school days and then um it's a, a day after all the dust has settled. The women have hopefully gotten some rest or got over some hangovers they had from the night prior. But I'm going to tell you, when I saw that scene when they was fussing and Kenya called herself walking away because Nene was getting in that ass. And then 
Marla wanted to, you know, tell Kenya how she felt about her coming in, trying to ruin or wreck her uh, hair event for her, go well, not go naked hair, but uh, that's Portia's brand. Um, but the wig, her wig collection that Marla called herself had, uh, getting together and selling online to, you know, the masses or whatnot. And she basically just wanted a um apology for Kenya to acknowledge that was wrong for her to do. But of course in Kenya fashion she was like, No, uh uh-uh, uh, we ain't gonna go there instead of Kenya just saying, You know what, that was a bad move. I'm sorry, but you know what? You need to stop throwing digs at me because you never know how I'm gonna come back at you. If I had to come back at you as a as a you know, a a statement i'm you know breaking your business opportunities <laughs> or whatever it just may be that but just know you shot the first bullet and i'm coming back how she said with a uh what she called herself the the sa- uh, slay assassin or she called herself uh coming with a full bag of ammunition i don't know how she put it but she was pretty much saying she was gonna shut shit down the next time she see you whether it's at a nice event whatever corporate event she just gonna embarrass the hell out of you especially if it has your name on the marquee that you're headlining she gonna come in and stir some shit up so you know that's how she could have did it if she wanted to play her cards right just say you know you saw it was a bad move i capitalized on it yes i wanted to make a fool of you i did it i came i saw i conquered okay so but i'm sorry i'm sorry for what i did i could have did a little bit better uh you know but like i said don't come for me because you never know how I may come back at you. And it, it, it just at your it wig party, okay? And then that would have been more cool. It's like a nice, nasty apology where you did kind of feel like you were wrong. You knew you were wrong. You admitted you were wrong. But you still didn't. You still did it. You know what I'm saying? So that's how she could have did it. But no, she didn't want to. So she, she pretty much didn't really apologize to Marlo. But anyway, doing that whole inception of things going along and Kenya walking away because she called herself didn't want to take the heat no more because it was just centered on her 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 so Candy went to uh call herself uh chiming in and telling Kenya not to walk away this that and the third uh, Candy was the MVP half of this well I, I would probably give her the the whole show she really stood in her shit and she showed me that you know she can call kenya out and maybe it just was us telling her she need to call kenya out and she's listening to us and seeing how she's looking back in hindsight when she looks at you know the past previous episodes she was uh being kenya's little lap dog and letting kenya get away with this that and third not to say she still won't do it but it's nice to see that she sit there and call kenya on her shit so thank you candy burris tucker for doing a nice eloquent job of getting kenya more together i saw it you came you conquered and you put it on that you're not kenya's watchdog not 100 percent of the time you can be when you're being petty but you really uh let her into it but i kind of kind of was like okay I see where you're going with it. But when that girl put her hands on me. And I, I, I y'all had left woman. So that's why I said it was a girl move. She pushed you candy. Okay. She pushed you and she slapped your hands down. That would have got her fist to her head. Or a fist to her. I would have been locking. I would have been making contact with her head. Her. Uh, what do you call it? Her jaw. Uh, her kneecaps something to that effect i'm just saying we would have been having some physical connection because when she pushed me like that and i'm like now what if with them scott sisters girl and they pushed you like that you know you would have been one two three punch tko same thing with Kay. You she taller than you but you had to chop her down like hit her in the stomach hit her in the kneecaps you know crunch her on the toes you know something to that effect bring that giant down okay chop her down like a cherry chop tree like what a man um damn that was johnny appleseed i'm thinking about but you know the, the man that was uh tom bunyan chopping down them trees yes honey i've been chopping kenya ass down okay because she wouldn't have pushed me not in my young age not in my season age and hell not in my two foot in the gray age uh-uh kenya moore would have not been touching me at 
Oh, so you good, girl. You good with your girlfriend. So I guess she one of your good, good girlfriends, as Lana B say in my Lana B voice. Okay, your good, good girlfriend. But I'm like, uh-uh, nah, mm-mm. We cool. But don't touch me. Don't touch me. I don't care if you're my family member. No. Tell me what you finna do. Because, see, I might just strike out. You know, that's just like reflexes or something. You might get punched out like that, okay? But, yeah, Kenny was so mad. Tell me she tired of this shit. I'm like, you ain't tired of this shit, Kenny. You signed up for this shit. Okay, so give us what you got or sit, the ass, sit your ass down, okay? Give us what you got or sit your ass down. All right? That's just how I feel about it. But ain't no way in the world that tall you bunk. Ooh. Paul Bun Paul Bunyan looking young lady would have been sitting up there pushing on me. I was too I was waiting for Kenny to strike out. I wait for her to strike. Cause that was just a bad reflex, honey. That was a been a bad reflex. But see that's why I said you you ride for these folk that be pushing on you. At first it was just verbalness. Now she pushing on you, Candy. That mm mm you ain't putting a push on me no way, no mm 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 mm. That I, I was just too fit to be tired then. I saw all the fake fool of a fucker with fraud and shit and shit. That would have went out the door. I would've been clocking that girl. I would've been clocking her. And I ain't talking about clocking T. I'm talking about connecting. All right, and we both would have had some assault charges, which it wouldn't have been uh founded because she pushed me first. I was just going off reflexes. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know if Candy really about their life or what or she just take her friendships a little bit too uh close you know what i'm saying Cause, mm -mm, mm -mm, my relatives can't even come to me like that cousins nobody no don't do me like that don't do me like that talk to me first before you try to put your hands on me or push me back no that ain't gonna work okay but anyway I was very disappointed in kenya because she always talking she don't know i put their hands on her and this and that just that and the third when she come to Nene and stuff. And then she putting her hands on somebody. Nope. That, no, 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 no. That wouldn't fly in no way with me. But anyway, that's just me. But moving on from that situation. Um, we go and we go with Portia. You know, it's, she pretty much in her confessional saying that it's all Kenya's fault. Just that and the third. We wouldn't be going through this shit if Kenya would act right. You know. Just stop trying to make your point and interrupting people. You know, everybody get a whole little spiel. They let you talk. They let you go to fruition till you tired. Then when it's time for them to say something, they bring up some pivotal, poignant questions for you. Then you just going to get all, you know, riled up and like, I ain't finna answer. Now nah, we need you to answer, baby. You sit on this show. You do what you do. You get paid very well. Answer the freaking questions, okay? So we can all move the hell on, okay? That's about what we asking for. Speak. When somebody's speaking to you, drop down whatever you want to know. But then hush when it's not your time to speak anymore. Because we're tired of you interrupting, Kenya. We are just tired of you interrupting. But anyway, we're going to a scene where uh, Kenya has made this little uh, trip to... I don't know if it's Lindsay Lohan's place or her mother, Diane. I think her, or Dina. I think her name is Dina uh, Lohan Resort or something. But, you know, she told Ken, if you ever come in the area, make sure you drop by my little spot. And I don't know if they got freebies or whatever, but they were expecting them. So, just see what it is. So, maybe they got the royal treatment. Hell, it was just a beach. You know, it wasn't like they were staying there uh, getting spa treatments or staying on the property far as you know living quarters or whatnot but it's a beach scene so candace sitting up there having fun with them and they were playing these little games and whatnot it's for team building experience exercises and can you need to stop throwing up them hand signs girl are you throwing up them bathroom hand signs like it ain't nobody's business okay but i'm just saying that the candy um she dishes so she calls herself putting out the team together she pairs nene and portia up together she pairs tanya and kenya up together uh and cynthia marlo okay we're just gonna say cynthia marlo should have shut this shit down they really should just set their asses down they both were moving like they were 80 years old and you got some 80 year old women that can move faster than they ass but I don't know what it was. They just, they didn't win nothing and they shouldn't have won nothing. Then they tried to spoil Tanya and Kenya winning a second round at something. But um, Tanya and Kenya won the first round or whatever exercise. They did another exercise. Uh, Nene and Portia won that one. Then the third exercise they tried with Portia and um not Portia, but Tanya and Kenya won that one as well because 
I don't know what the hell Portia and Nene were doing. She was trying to carry uh, the weight of Nene, and I mean literally, on her back. And she just couldn't do it. Nene's just a big woman. More so height than or actually weight. And, you know, they were having fun. They were loving on each other. And... I can't, I can't love her no more. I can't. We just got to fall out together and just lag, girl. I can't move you no more. I'm sorry. And then you had, um, I, like I said, I don't know what the hell Cynthia and Marlo were doing around there. They should have just sat in the sand and just watched the other two try to compete with each other. Um, but like I said, it was, it was good banter. I, I enjoyed Tanya and um uh, kenya sitting up there working together out of all the stuff that kenya tried to throw on tanya when it came to trying to put a wedge in between uh her situation with her uh situation relationship slash fiance whatever they got going on uh that particular uh situation uh they they work well together let's just put it like that but kenya is very competitive Tanya is competitive, but she likes to have fun. And since she knew that Kenya is very competitive and she liked to win, she sucked everything up and played real ball. So, uh, good job, uh, Tanya, for rolling with Kenya, even though Kenya tried to mess over your relationship in public rather than private. Okay, girl. All right. Then we go to um, a situation with the... Well, we're going to go on to the end because it really wasn't nothing too much to say pretty much about the whole thing. It was just a lot of cat fighting and this, that, that. But I wanted to say about them cats. I don't know. I don't know if I would have ate that food. I don't know what Kenya and um, Kenya were doing when they booked this particular resort around all these different animals. You know what I'm saying? We didn't see them many dogs, but we sure saw a lot of cats out there. And I'm like, cats carry Lyme disease, and they all look like they were just straight cats. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, why are these cats coming from? They drinking out the pool. Anyway, in the world, I would have been in the pool. I'm sorry. And Portia dropped in that pool, uh, that beautiful pool scenery where they're staying at the resort. resort. I'm like, man, you need to put some more chlorine up in now, whatever. But I think it was kind of cool anyway. Anyway, the hell, I would have been uh, partaking in no pool activity. I've been inside spa. Y'all got inside spa with no cats coming around. That, uh, they ain't allowed, right? Okay, that's how we would have been. And now, nah, put my stuff on the inside. We're gonna have like how we had those little desserts when Nene and and, and Kenya had got into it. Uh, we would have some on the inside. Cause I'm like, mm -mm, we ain't me and me being black and i you know i have uh two uh small dogs myself but uh, uh i wash my hands i make sure ain't no hair on my body that can drop on my food when i'm you know on my clothes when i'm cooking no uh -uh, we, we ain't finna do all that okay and I, I expect the same thing from somebody else that's trying to feed me okay too many damn cats i was like no nah, we got to have some some pots with some lids over it and we need to have this shit inside and we can have drinks on the outside there because i you know i can cover it put me a napkin on my drink you know for the mosquitoes or whatever they're trying to you know partake in my liquid or whatever but now honey that night that last night they were sharing in greece chapoli can't have that food she it was kind of suspect i ain't that shit <laughs> <laughs> I was like, give me some bread and some salad. I ain't eating nothing over here, okay? I got me some snacks. You know, big girl like me, we travel with snacks, okay? So, the cats were jumping out up on the table, the, you know, where the food was and stuff. I'm like, girl, I, I can't. And Nene was like, I ain't finna eat that shit. And I'm like, I know that right, Nene. Mm -mm, we got some snacks in the bedroom. We'll chill because we just did this. is some one night. I'm like, do y'all have to go or take out? I can call. And better yet, that's okay. I'll just go into my room and just just uh, starve or whatever. Eat off the little snacks I got. Because y'all ain't finna kill me over here. Y'all ain't finna kill me, girl. Did y'all bring the Corona over here? Candy. Did y'all bring the Corona over him but anyway just like i said just too much straightness straight cats going around straight dogs mm -mm, i wouldn't have been eating shit but anyway they had called themselves um doing a play acting role candy and cynthia were talking about it in their little bungalow or whatever uh room and they were saying they want to do a greek uh tragedy play and they want to uh imitate candy and cynthia i mean candy and nini's uh demeanor and how you know since they couldn't get it together and express their opinions on how each other act towards one another in certain situations they're gonna act it out and maybe they can see themselves and see oh 
okay. That's where we're going. But I didn't need anyone here for that shit. I like Nene. Please let me call. I want to see it anyway. And they should have still did it just for us. So they can look back, both Kenya and Nene, and say, okay, well, y'all did me right. Y'all did me okay. But Nene was on the impression that she, uh, Cynthia may still be Team Candy and and, and, and Kenya and uh, she may maybe not make her look so well because you know that's still uh, nurturing their friendship back and I could see why Nene would think that but I still would have let it play it out honey I was like go on and do what you think you can do with me okay let me see what you got on your arsenal okay and that's how I would have played that. I wouldn't have walked out. And I was like, damn, see that? Why I took Nene Cole up? She be doing too much. I mean, just because Kenya walked away the first time when y'all were having this, that, and the third. She walked away two times. No, she did walk away two times because Nene and her was supposed to have a, like a little olive branch uh, talk after the other women had joined Cynthia in the kitchen or uh, do the dishes. I think it was the first or second night they were there. And then she walked away uh, on this last episode where they brought it to this episode of what had transpired and then he didn't spit on her but Kenya used that for the whole trailer before the season started you know saying all this that and the third when actually it didn't happen now then he was throwing some hell of, hell of a peanut and and popcorn parade at Kenya every time she get a chance she was throwing nuts at Kenya she was throwing popcorn at Kenya I was like girl are you the planter's peanut guy girl stop it you need to be eating them peanuts because Hey, I'm sure them cats going to come and catch every little shit you throwing on that floor. That's why they still there because you're feeding them, Nene. Damn. But, uh, yeah, the closest uh, Kenya would have gotten to a spit was from Nene taking that peanut and, 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 you know, blowing it out her mouth to hit Kenya or whatnot. But, it, you know, Ken, uh, Nene was talking about she was drunk. She had too much drink. No, Nene was sober as hell. She might have been a little tipsy, but she knew exactly what she was doing when she was throwing them peanuts and popcorn, okay? Okay, a little perched, porched like that to give me a little drink. All right, but anyway, that's pretty much what it was. They did not let Candy and um, Cynthia enact them in Greece for a Greek tragedy play. Uh, because they, uh, Nene just got up and left her. She was going to the bathroom. <laughs> I was like, Nene, you ain't going to no bathroom, child. You trying to lead you like Kenya left. To make this dramatic exit for the last night that y'all had in Greece. Okay, and I'm like, I saw that a mile away coming. But I was hoping you didn't play that card, but you played it. And that's why we took your player's card. Being an OG over here at the Deb Chanel's 48th World. But the family affair, because you ain't standing in your shit, honey. You don't let no young book run you. But again, it just is what it is, okay? But uh, let me see what else we have to talk about. Oh, when they were trying to uh, say what type of goddess they were going to be for the night. Since Kenya was supposed to have made names for each one of them. And Candy called her out on her shit. You know, she like, what, what are the names that you were supposed to get the latest? And she said, um, I think I'll just let them choose their own. Like, no, you didn't do what you supposed to have did. No, you did not do your due diligence. No, you shouldn't have been making any plans or hosting a trip, you or Candy. Because y'all stayed in a shitty resort that it was, seemed like it was beautiful on the outside. But when them cats and them dogs came in the picture, fuck that. I would have been like, uh-uh, let's, where, where do other people stand at? What where, Where's the resort where they don't have this stuff at? Because this, uh-uh, we ain't finna be going through all this. Not with my food. And then I got to eat. Then you're going to make me have food poisoning. Uh-uh, and then I might be taking the coronavirus back to the state. See, Candy, y'all bring the coronavirus back with y'all. I just want to know, girl. <laughs> Did you and Kenya bring the coronavirus back to the states? But anyway, we're going to move on from that one. That was just a little jokey joke. Okay, um... Oh, let me see. Um, okay. That was about it, guys. It was, like I said, they gave us drama uh, here and there, you know, here and there. But it, uh, it was just piggybacking off of what happened last, um, last week. And I was like, okay, I got it. Get it. Got it good. All right. Y'all didn't give me too much, but y'all gave me what y'all could. All right. So, hopefully, the reunion will be uh, a little bit better than uh, what we have gotten overall for this season. Um, 
Because, oh they, oh, they did. Let me go back. They did clear up a situation where Nene did apologize for if, if Kenya felt that she called her child a buffalo. Which I already knew the connotation that Nene had really put it in. She was saying Kenya was a buffalo. Okay. But, you know, everybody took it to the fact that, well, I ain't going to say everybody, some people had took it to the fact that Nene did call her child a buffalo. I don't know how you're going to call a child something when they ain't even on this earth, you know what I'm saying? They developing, okay? They into the process of, you know, being cooked and whatnot. But they ain't out where you could see them. They have a face. They have a name to even say Nene said that. No. Nene was calling Kenya a big ass buffalo because she just said what is she having a buffalo meaning to the fact Kenya was the buffalo and if a buffalo gonna have a child then the child's gonna be a buffalo too you see what I'm saying but she didn't mean it in that connotation so she did break it down to the crowd to the viewers of the show that she was calling Kenya big as hell and I tell you Kenya as well as or uh, what her name? Eva. They can carry some big ass high toting babies in their stomach. Now, definitely Eva gets the prize. She gets the prize called Ooh Child. But Kenya was a big caring toting woman too. Oh I, I just saw ten pounders coming out of them. But it just is what it is. They both had very beautiful, healthy uh babies and you know, hopefully they don't they don't continue to see their parents acting this way on TV just to get that change, that coins, some dollars to keep them them in the livelihood that they were born into. So, but yeah, that's all I had, honey. So I don't want to hear no more, uh, cause I'm like Nene and Candy pretty much said it too. Hell, ain't nobody got no beef on them worse than what I had. Hell, I don't care what y'all saying. King was trying to defend herself and can't say. I uh -uh, want somebody to say rape. And put that with your name involved in that whole sentence. Then you got something to be upset about. But what you and Nene got going back and forth. Name calling this, that, and the third. That's totally different. And I could concur with Candy a hell of a lot. The only thing I got mad with Candy about. She took this thing that she was being accused of. And made money off of it. So that kind of kind of tarnished. Or it made it a little lighter. Than what she had said it was. When it was happening to her. Um. The situation with what Portia had said about the rape allegation and the drugging and stuff. So, yeah. But, Candy, we need you to kind of pull up on that as well. Because, like I said, you know, made money. So, it's time to let bygones be bygones and know who to fuck with and who to leave alone, in a sense. Okay? But then you can really say, okay, I'm going to have to sue you. <laughs> Because, <laughs> see, I don't like you. and We never broke bread after this incident. And then you still coming for me. And I ain't finna make no money off of it. Because, see, I'm coming for all what you got. All right? And then that would have been a totally different scenario. But it wasn't played out that way. So, it's time to forgive, forget, and let go. And let's start some new uh, storylines here. If we're going to be forced to see y'all stay on our screens. I need y'all to do more, not necessarily fight amongst each other. You can get each other here and there, but I need other things where y'all fighting with your partners and stuff like that. Some real life shit, okay? Because don't nobody agree and, and be on the same accord in a relationship all the time. So I think that's some what the viewers want to see. It's some what I want to see. Uh, fam, what y'all think about that? Do y'all want to see it as well? So y'all get down in them comments. Y'all tell me what y'all feel about this episode of... An episode 19 ruined peaches of the season 12 of the real housewives of atlanta and i will see y'all next video okay be blessed and stay strong